How's it going everyone? Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Tavius Plays and I'm back with another video. But first, I want to thank you for all the support on my last video. It's really appreciated. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and drop a like, subscribe, do all that good stuff for the YouTube algorithm. 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 I love that word. On today's video, I want to go over three things that could be very confusing for new and returning players to Destiny 2. Destiny 2 is a huge game and understanding its power grind, the currencies and activities you can do in game could save new and returning players a lot of time and headache. So let's get into it. Let's begin with the power level. Your power level in Destiny 2 determines how much damage you deal and how much you can take. If your power level is lower than the power recommended for the activity you're trying to play, then the damage you take will be really high and you'll deal a lot less damage to enemies in that activity. At the start of the game, you will receive gear that is 1100 power level. From here, everything you do will give you higher power drops than what you already have, which means any gear or weapons you find will be higher than 1100 until you reach the soft cap. The soft cap, as of the current season, which is the season of the Chosen, is 1250. Once you reach 1250 power, you can only go higher getting powerful drops. Weekly challenges are a good way to get powerful drops. Completing bounties for Zavala, Shaxx, Banshee44, Drifter, also Hawthorne, and getting the occasional Prime Engram to drop from a random enemy will get your power up to 1300, which is known as the hard cap. Now, once you reach the hard cap of 1300, there are 10 more power levels you can get. This is called a pinnacle cap, and it's currently 1310. There are a lot less sources of pinnacle drops, as this is considered the end game power cap. Higher difficulty activities like raids, exotic quests, nightfalls, and dungeons can give you your pinnacle drops, as well as your weekly trifecta of core activities, which are strikes, crucible, and gambit. Participating in 3 Crucible matches, 3 Gambit matches, and 3 Strikes weekly will grant you 3 Pinnacle Drops per week. Also activities like the Iron Banner and Trials of Osiris offer Pinnacle Drops, and seasonal events like the Dawning, Guardian Games, Solstice of Heroes, and the Halloween event Festival of the Lost. So once you've reached the Pinnacle Cap of 1310, you can still go higher, temporarily that is, with a Seasonal Artifact. Just by leveling up your artifact with XP from any activity, you will receive extra power points to add to your total power. This power, like I said, is temporary for the current season and it goes away when the season ends. So let's say by the end of the current season, your gear power level is 1310, but you end up at 1328 with the artifact. Then at the beginning of the next season, you will be back down at 1310 and receive a new artifact to level up. But keep in mind that if you reach the pinnacle power cap in one season, then when the next season comes, you will only have to do the pinnacle grind of 10 levels. Seasons only add a 10 power increase and big expansion releases like Beyond Light and the Witch Queen add 200 power to climb. And that is the power grind. Okay, next up is currencies. Destiny has a lot of different currencies and planetary materials which can be used to trade in for weapons or gear at tower vendors, or trade them for a different type of currency if you visit the spider in the Tango Shore. But that's only if you own the Forsaken DLC, which you should because the story is amazing and it unlocks three new light subclasses for each class. Anyway, getting off topic. Uh, it can get very confusing as to how to acquire some of them, so I came up with a breakdown. Let's start with Glimmer, your base currency. You get it from every single thing you do, and you can hold up to 250,000. You will always need Glimmer for almost everything you do in Destiny 2, from upgrading a weapon or armor, applying a weapon mod, upgrading your ghost, and applying tracking, economy, and activity mods to your ghost, but most importantly, your armor mods. At the start of the game, you'll have a few to choose from, but as you progress, you'll unlock more and more different armor mods, anywhere from better target acquisition, faster reload, faster grenade regeneration, etc. All these mods require Glimmer to be applied to your armor. Oh, and you also need Glimmer to purchase bounties. Bounties, bounties, bounties. It seems like that's all we do in Destiny. Legendary Shards Legendary Shards are your second most important currency. 
You need them to master war weapons and armor, and you receive them mostly by dismantling legendary gear or weapons you don't need. You also need them to visit Zer every Friday and pick up any exotic you might be missing from his inventory, and his faded engram which will give you a guaranteed exotic you don't have yet. Next up, Enhancement Cores. Enhancement Cores are required alongside legendary shards to master war weapons and armor and also to purchase upgrade modules, which allows you to infuse your favorite gear to a higher power by consuming a higher power piece of gear. Enhancement Prisms Enhancement Prisms are required if you want to fully master work gear and exotics, and can only be obtained from challenging activities like Nightfalls or purchase from the vendor at the tower. Ascendant Shards Ascendant shards are needed mostly to masterwork exotic armor pieces but also at the Monument of Lost Light kiosk at the tower, to acquire exotics and legendary weapons from previous activities that are no longer in the game. You can obtain it through high difficulty nightfalls or buying it from a vendor at the tower but for a really high price. Exotic Cipher The exotic cipher is the special rare currency needed at the kiosk for legacy exotic weapons and also to purchase a second faded engram from Zer. There are two ways to obtain exotic ciphers. The first is to reach level 55 of your season pass. Even if you don't own the season pass, you'll still get it on the free version. The second is to pick up the weekly Zer quest which requires you to participate in the core playlist for Strikes, Crucible and Gambit. Keep in mind you can only hold one cipher at a time. Spoils of Conquest now, this currency is obtained only in raids by defeating bosses and opening chests inside the raid. This currency is needed in order to get exotics that were tied to a raid that is no longer in the game. Bright Dust and Silver These currencies are to be used in Eververse, which is the microtransaction store. Silver can only be bought with real money and used to get cool emotes, ships, sparrows, shaders, weapon and armor, ornaments, etc. The Bright Dust is earned in-game by completing seasonal and weekly challenges and also daily and weekly bounties. However, there's a portion of the Eververse store that is not purchasable with Bright Dust and it's silver only. Next up, Gunsmith Materials. Gunsmith materials are received from all weapons you dismantle and its only use as of now is to turn into the gunsmith in exchange for random weapon drop. With the release of season 14 and the introduction of the transmog system, we are getting 3 new currencies, but I'll leave that for another video once we have more information on that. There are even more currencies and materials, but I believe that understanding these 9 will be very helpful for a new or returning guardian, and hopefully prevent you from frustration or even moving on to another game. Game Modes and Activities Next, I'd like to give a brief explanation on the different modes and activities you can get into, not including the main campaign, which if you're watching this video and you made it this far, you should definitely play. Let's start with the 3 core activities. Strikes, Crucible and Gambit Strikes is the PvE 3 player low difficulty match made activity. Strikes are around 10 minutes long with a big boss at the end and a loot chest after you beat it. And the Nightfalls are the harder difficulty versions of the same strikes. Now the Crucible is the PvP playlist where your power level is synced for everyone, no power advantages. There's a few different modes inside the playlist, but Control is the most popular one where you are matched with 5 other players to fight another group of 6 for the control of 3 zones of the map. Then there is Iron Banner which rotates into the playlist about once a month. In this mode, you also play Control, but your power level actually matters, so if your power level is low and you jump into this playlist, you could face people who are in the pinnacle cap and they'll seem invincible to you. And then there is Gambit. Gambit is a very unique mode. It's the matchmate hybrid multiplayer mode that combines the elements of PvP and PvE. Two teams of four compete against each other on separate maps with the goal to defeat hordes of enemies as fast as possible and deposit the modes they drop into a bank in the middle of the map. Once your team deposits 100, a big primeval boss spawns and you have to kill him before the opposite team kills theirs. Sounds simple, right? Well, every 25 modes a team banks, a portal opens to invade the enemy team and try to stop them from depositing their modes into the bank. 
Once the primeval has arrived, the portal opens more often, allowing teams to invade each other constantly, and also killing enemy team members heals their primeval, so invading is key. Lost Sectors the Lost Sectors are... think of it as a mini solo strike, and they're spread across all destinations. Some have higher difficulties you can select as you go in, and some exotic armor pieces are tied to these high difficulty Lost Sectors. Raids Raids are the pinnacle activities. No matchmaking and high difficulty encounters require team coordinations to clear the activity. Dungeons Dungeons are mini raids. These are three player activities um, similar to strikes but no matchmaking and high difficulty encounters and mechanics like raids. On top of all these activities, each season has a seasonal activity introduced to the game that allows you to grind for the seasonal weapons and armor to add to your collection. For example, Season 12 with the release of Beyond Light introduced the Wrathborn Hunts, and Season 13 introduced the Battlegrounds. In the past, Bungie used to remove the seasonal activities after the season ends, but in order to remove the fear of missing out, they decided to keep the seasonal activities in the game for a whole year. And that's it for the video. If you like this kind of content, if you find it informative, go ahead and drop a like. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.